Right now, I'm going to show you the difference between saturation and vibrance inside of Photoshop. I'm going to tell you which one to use and how to use both of them together. Hey, Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. And this week, we're going to be looking at saturation and vibrance. Now, these sliders are inside of Camera Raw. They're also inside of Lightroom, and of course, there are also adjustment layers inside of Photoshop. Where we're going to use them today for this tutorial is inside of Camera Raw. So you can either go inside of Bridge, and then right-click on the photo, and then choose Open in Camera Raw. Or if you're inside of Photoshop, choose Filters, Camera Raw. Okay, so here's a photograph that I've made all the adjustments to except for the overall color when we're looking at vibrance and saturation. So let's explain them right now. If you look at saturation, what this does is it just goes from black and white to way too much color. So this is just a slider that tells you how much color do you want to put in your photo. And it just moves everything across the range. Now, pay attention to these buoys also to the sky here and maybe this blue area. Watch what happens when I push this above. Notice that these go very high. They clip. In other words, these colors will not be reproduced and they'll lose detail in those areas of color. Double click will reset it. Let's look at vibrance. Vibrance is a lot more intelligent than saturation. Saturation is just like a volume slider and it just goes all the way from zero to full bore. Vibrance, on the other hand, is more intelligent. Imagine if you had a stereo system and you could adjust the volume, but it kept the bass where it is, almost like having a separate subwoofer. That's what this does, is it looks at two areas in the photos, which areas have a lot of saturation already, and which areas don't have a lot of saturation. And when I say saturation, amount of color. Zero saturation is black and white. So what it does is it will make the adjustment. So here's an area that has a lot of color. Here's an area of not so much color. And then when you slide it, this area is going to move more than the area of a lot of color. So the area of not much color, you're going to see a lot of adjustment. The area of just a little bit of color, it's not going to move much. And the reason for that is because you don't want to blow out those colors. So it protects the saturation in the existing images. Let me demonstrate. Once again, watch these buoys, and I'm going to go to the Vibrance now and move this. Notice they are not changing much compared to the sky. Look at the clouds in the sky where there's not a lot of saturation, and watch how much more adjustment happens in there. So why do we need both of them? Why don't we just have a Vibrance? And this is a very good question. So the answer to this really is going to be the value in this video. If you just had a vibrant slider, and maybe I wanted to make the sky more saturated, but I want to pull back the saturation a little bit on these buoys, I can't do that, or buoys, depending on where you live. To get the buoys to about where I want is there. Notice we've got some better detail in them right there. When I go here, see we start to lose the detail? So I want to pull it back a little bit. But I want to get more detail or more color into the sky. Notice I can't do that without blowing these out. So this is what you do. With both of these zeroed out, you take your saturation, reduce the saturation, just watching the buoys or the boys, and that's the amount of color. So I'm reducing the color here. And now I can punch up the vibrance, and that's going to give me the color I want in the sky without oversaturating these other areas. Now, sometimes you might want to go back and just tweak it a little bit more, pull it back a little bit on the saturation, then you can pull up that vibrance. So that's one way that you would work. And this is a very practical way of doing it. Now, you can also do some interesting things for visual effects. And if I pull the vibrance down quite a lot, we can take all the color out of the image and just these vibrant areas are going to show, just these saturated areas. So you're going to see, you know, kind of a partial color. The other way that can be really interesting is to take the saturation all the way down, really reduce that saturation in the photograph, and then you can punch up the vibrance. And notice what we're doing now is we're getting more saturation in these clouds and sky and less in this area. So it gives us more 
creative options and also look at the trees see how the details showing through nicely in those trees so vibrance and saturation the key is not to think of them as separate sliders think of them as a group of sliders or two sliders that work together as one tool and if you do that you're going to unlock a whole lot of different ways that you can show more detail in your images and get more control over all the overall color so i'm curious did you learn anything new in this video do you prefer saturation or vibrance or is this opening up some creative opportunities for you? Let me know in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new, first of all, welcome here to Photoshop Cafe. Great to have you. Consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on the notifications and then you'll know when I upload new videos, which is at least once a week. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.